awesome. The Crazy Blessed Worship. I'm Coley D. And I am the original Rick W. Ross. <laughs> you guys, we have an incredible guest on that we had her initially on the Crazy Blessed Worship live program, which Rick hosts every Friday night from 6 till 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. And uh, it's a Christian artists come together and do a concert. And the beautiful thing is between the songs, they share their stories and a little bit behind the song. You get to know them a little bit. And it's because of Rick doing that that I got to know who our awesome guest, Chi Lomalog. Am I saying this right? Santos. <laughs> I always want to make sure I honor that people get my name wrong all the time. <laughs> but um, man... One of the things that just stuck out to me with Chi was she actually has this presence about her. And it might seem weird, but you can actually pick it up off people online. And I was just like, there's just such a peacefulness to her. And and I know say like, you, you might not feel it sometimes, but you you emanate this like this peace. And I know a lot of that comes from just being in the presence of God. And if you listen to Chi. It's not hard to figure out that her heart is literally after the Lord. And you listen to her music and, and just the way she sings. And she is an outstanding multi-instrumentalist. <laughs> and I could go on for a while. But first things first, she is joining us on her day off. She's very busy. So I want to say thank you, Chi, for joining us. How are you doing today? I'm good. Thank you so much, Kali. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm really glad to be uh, a part of this uh, podcast uh, today with Kali and Rick. Well, we are excited to share about you. Um, can you actually, maybe a great place to start would be you share a little bit about how you got into making music and particularly when you shifted into doing music for the Lord. Um, it actually started uh, when I was in the mission. Uh, I was a fresh uh, nursing graduate uh, that time. That was back in the 90s. And, uh, you know, we were living in the mountains, uh, ministering to people, um, providing um, medical care to them. And it's so uh, inspiring. Um, to write these songs and I've been writing them um, while I was there uh, in the mission field. Um, they're based upon my uh, daily devotions, the reading of the Bible, and also uh, with how I relate with, with people, the experiences that uh, I had uh, with them. So, but it was only like 2020 or 2021 when uh, I was Googling and I was just uh, looking for uh, like contests where I could uh, join like songwriting. So I got, a, <laughs> I got an opportunity that time, like in 2020, when I saw this uh, UCAP Jam uh, songwriting contest uh, in the Philippines and I tried to submit my song and my song was um part of the the final of five songs uh that time oh, that's awesome. uh yeah i did not win but i mean the experience itself is really uh a blessing to me because it opened like a lot of doors i was able to uh get in touch with uh more songwriters some producers like that and that's where it all started uh even if uh I've been writing songs uh, for years. Uh, it was only in 2022 that I was able to uh, to record and release my first song. That's incredible. Your first songwriting competition and you were in the top five. I know. See, I haven't listened to her music, you guys. I know why. <laughs> <laughs> that would be encouraging. I tell you what, that would encourage me. If I have my, was my first song and I, I put lit, you know, I submitted it like that and it, and it got place in the top five i said man god must be want me to do this <laughs> so what's the name of that song where can we find that one? Oh, it uh the song is entitled i'll be all right and uh 
the story behind that is that uh, I wrote the first uh, the verses for that song, and then uh, I had a chorus, but when I, I look back, it kind of it sounds like outdated. <laughs> So in uh, 2020, 2021, 2022, uh, I tried to to put the, the chorus. Uh, that's the part where it says, uh, I'll be all right, I'll be all right. <laughs> but yeah, so I only added the, the chorus that time. Like uh, it takes like years before I was able to uh, record it. It's amazing how long some songs can take to kind of come into their little perfect, that. like this is how they are. Like, um, I know Linda Bowles we had on here, she had talked about 1982. She had some songs she'd written and it wasn't until many, many, many years later <laughs> that mm -hmm. uh, they came out. And now she's, um, at one point, I know I had seen she had two songs on the top christian radio charts yeah. and i was just loving that god can just take songs and keep keep working through us we have no idea you know what's gonna happen with them and mm -hmm. uh, that's really really cool you were a missionary how did you become a missionary like what made you decide that you wanted to do that i'm curious there so when i was yet a nursing student uh we were um we were involved in uh, like a mission exposure, also in the mountains through Medical Ambassadors Philippines. That's the same uh, mission group that I, I joined uh, back in the Philippines. So I was really inspired by how we like nurses or other people can be used by the Lord, uh, not only ministering to them uh, medically or physically, but to share with them the, the gospel. And uh, it's just there in my heart. Like uh, as soon as I graduated, I, I put my application <laughs> and joined uh, this mission, miss, the same mission group. And uh, it's been uh, really an experience. I think I, uh, I stayed there for about five years uh, in that mission field until I, I I went back to school to take my master and then uh, taught in uh, a nursing college uh, back in Manila. So that's the only time I kind of like. <laughs> when did you find Jesus? I mean, have you always had faith? I mean, were you born again as a child? Or, I mean, did you always know God? I mean, when, when did that start? No, um, the thing was. It was also when I was in college, like first year uh, college in nursing, when two of my classmates uh, came to me and shared to me the gospel. Uh, I did not respond like immediately. I was just, you know, observing and listening. And then um, it was also about the same time when um, my father was sick and then he passed away. Like uh, we are financially challenged as a family at that time. And we don't know where we're gonna get uh, the money to uh, bury uh, my father in the province. But I prayed that time, my family prayed that time and God answered it. It's not like something uh, really, really big, but that kind of like, uh, it created like uh, a turn turning point for me that if this is the God uh, that uh, we're calling upon, who is able to answer prayers, how can I not uh, surrender my life to him? And since then, I mean, that's when I committed myself, received Jesus in my, my heart and in my life and made him uh, my savior. That is so awesome. So how did you get from the Philippines to Maryland? <laughs> a lot of exams <laughs> so uh i was actually in bahrain um from philippines my husband was um was in was working in bahrain so i followed him there uh, we stayed there for um i joined him there for about uh eight ten years until we moved here in uh in the u.s so again I just sent my application, took some exams like that, and then 
the Lord has answered our prayers. We were able to get to the U.S. We uh, we went first to uh, Florida and then to Rhode Island uh, and took a lot of exams. <laughs> And uh, yeah, the, the nursing exams for you to be able to practice. But uh, God is really good because he provided everything, the means, and also, uh, you know, for allowing me to uh, pass all those exams so that I could come in, in here. That's awesome. In the U.S., yeah. yeah that's awesome. That's absolutely incredible. I'm curious if you have any um because you're a musician and songwriter did you have any experiences when you were in the mission field where you were able to share your songs with people um so we when we were in the missions we were uh we were given the chance to uh hold bible studies and sometimes uh they asked us to uh to preach share the gospel and uh the message sunday message like that during the services sometimes they they call us to um just uh lead in the in the singing or just like a get together thing uh among believers so that's the only time we could uh share our songs so i'm guessing there was really good response to your music <laughs> yes <laughs> like uh the people there are really really uh simple you know they love um, new songs. They love to sing like that. And it always, it's something that really inspires us, um, like to have this uh, Bible studies that are really um, touching and blessing people. And a number of them have come to know the Lord uh, through these Bible studies. So as a musician, when, when did you feel like you were called to sing and write songs? I mean, have you always sung even before you met Christ? Did you, were you singing there? You always wanted to sing then? Or, or is it just a thing when you, after you came to Jesus, you decided, hmm, maybe God wants me to sing? Actually, um, I like singing, but not like, like with a crowd. I just like to sing at home. That's it. Nothing like a <laughs> joining contest like that. And uh, I'm more into like uh, songwriting. I do sing, but then because when I wrote my songs, I wanted to sing it myself <laughs> and uh, to share it with people. And uh, it, I, I, I'm not really like a professional uh, singer. I just like to sing, that's it. <laughs> Yeah, but I just heard a song like on YouTube. Awesome. I'll see you in the morning. What a beautiful song. And your voice is beautiful on that song. I love your voice on that. The cat it's very catchy, the chorus is, and uh you got such a sweet voice on that song. Thank you so much, Rick. Uh there's a story behind that song. So um, I wrote that song in memory of a friend. Uh she was my classmate, uh classmate in uh high school and he was she was a pastor's wife and we don't communicate often on the, um, like a call or talk but we connect uh on facebook and uh based on that i i could see how uh she's really um involved in the lord's work a uh, very inspirational and uh, i'm really inspired by her life so one day in uh in july of uh last year uh i heard about her death like two days after i was really grieving that time because uh, i i could see how her life had touched many lives and uh i know uh how life is that short like uh here we come and then here we go like we don't we just don't know when uh the lord takes us uh takes us home and so I was able to write that song. I'll see in the morning. That is uh, like um, it carries some hope in it. Like when we are believers, death is just a pause and that uh, there will come a time that we'll be reunited with them again. And if they have Jesus also in their heart and in their lives, 
we have that assurance that one day uh, we'll be meeting again. So it's like she just slept. We'll see her again in the morning. <laughs> Yeah, I know she wasn't that old. Yeah. I mean, you, you told me she was fairly young. When she, it was just a sudden thing. She, she got pneumonia yep. and just passed, She's, just like that. Yep. Mm, yeah. It was really, really sudden. Mm -hmm. mm. But um, that's one of the most beautiful tributes. I'm telling you, that's one of the most beautiful things you can do when someone passes. So someone actually writes a song about you, mm. but it's it carries a way of just thinking. And I like the way that you you portrayed just just the song. It's it's just really neat, you guys. You gotta go check it out. It's on all major yeah. platforms, isn't it, Chief? Yes. yes. And I did uh create uh the Spanish version of it. It has the Spanish version of it too. You can oh, check awesome. it out. Uh it's entitled Tevere and en La Mañana. So So you speak English and you speak Spanish and you speak Tagalog? The Spanish part, I don't. I have to be honest with you. So what I did okay. with the, the Spanish version is that I have uh, somebody like a Spanish uh, singer to interpret it. Okay. And then I just followed how she did it. <laughs> so I'm looking I'm at your songs. That, I'm like, she's got multiple languages here. I know. I'm really curious cool. to know if, if, uh, if the, the woman uh, that she who passed away, her husband has had a chance to hear the song. I did. I actually, um, when I first created the demo, the demo, the, the very, very first one that I recorded on my cell phone, I, I sent it to him and yeah, how, how and did then you I sent him the release. He was, he was blessed and yeah. he was touched sure. by, by that gesture. Yeah. I'm sure he was. Yeah. And then when I completed the the final one, the one that I released, I sent him again, along with the with the album cover to kind of like <laughs> give him the like a, a disc type. <laughs> yeah, wow. that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. What a thing to honor him with. Yeah. I think a lot of times when we we have somebody that we know that loses a spouse, a lot of times people don't necessarily think about that volume of loss and what that is for somebody that's been married for who knows how long yeah um, this is cheese heart you guys <laughs> seriously it is so beautiful um just listening to your music i one that i really liked was stepping stones and you were sharing earlier with rick and myself about how you were doing stuff with beats i'd love if you'd share a little bit about the stepping stone song and kind of the the back building and how it came to be yeah so i i have some of these bits that i got like i mean i have to to be honest with you these are free bits that uh i've gotten like online like that but i built on them like uh with my um with my app i put instruments on it and then i just had somebody uh like uh, mix and master it for me and I love it because it's so uh it's so calming it's uh very appropriate when you're trying to meditate or you're trying to worship god with that with that sound so it has some like sound of flowing waters the stepping stones uh for a title it just pop in my mind <laughs> to be honest with you you have an instrument that comes in there. It's about a minute in, and I actually could not place what it was. I'm super curious if if you know or if it's sitting in your your da or something in your app. But it's almost like a Celtic -y tribal sound that just comes in there. It's like a sound I was not expecting to hear, and it's so cool. Like it literally, when I was listening to that song, my ears were picking up like on all the instruments, like instruments. The, when you put the shaker in and all this other stuff and um the shaker is what i remember the, <laughs> the other instruments <laughs> the other instruments i don't remember anymore like yeah but uh yes the so shakers cool. i love the it's shakers it's very soothing you can keep a beat you sure can you guys should see her you got a video on your youtube where you're playing your drum and I think it's really uh, neat to see you do that. And her guitar playing, she can finger pick. <laughs> <laughs> like, 
the first time I heard you play on the Crazy Bless Worship Live, I was just so in awe of just listening to your guitar playing. I'm like, this is this is a skilled musician. And uh it's one of those things it's just it just kind of adds this extra like depth to just the way that you sing in your songs. And um one of the things that I know we wanted to touch on is you have a song coming out August 23rd and uh, it's called King Jesus. You want to share a little bit about that song? Yes, I'm, I'm really excited to uh, release that song. So again, um, it started with the beat and I put like instruments on it. I love uh, ethnic sounds, uh, particularly uh, African sounds and uh, for a while i've been praying uh to god uh that he will lead me to uh write like a praise song and this is the first real praise song that i would say that uh, i have uh i have written so based on that uh basic sound that uh i had i put uh, lyrics into it and this is more about uh worshiping our god jesus as king who is Jesus in our lives. So um, I would like to share that uh, message. It has the gospel message on it again, just like my other songs. The drum sound, that's what I'm wondering is where the inspiration where you first fell in love with that kind of the different ethnic songs. Is that just places that you went on missions where you got to hear just different types of music you were exposed to or? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, the are... natives in our, in, in the, the area where I work before they do play gongs, uh, when they do this uh, ceremonies and their uh, when they have these festivals, so I kind of like reminds me again about uh, the place where I've been. So uh, it always uh, inspires me uh, every time I hear these uh, ethnic sounds or ethnic instruments, drums and gongs, <laughs> those stuff. I'm just so interested in the different experience. It's one of the neat things with getting to do missions as a musician. I'm sure there's some areas where, you know, different cultures, different languages. One of the cool things is that music is just the universal language. That's and, you know, true. A lot, of, a lot of it is just like you can feel it. And people miss this part. If you think about it, the the things that are happening as we're being creative, we're, we're already automatically exposed to song. So mm -hmm. it is music that, you know, it's it's almost like it's woven into us, which is why I love the psychological studies of, you know, people and even some animals. You can see them. They can't help but respond when music is being played. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's one of the things I think is so neat is you you have this way of tapping into that. You've got the different languages. You've got, you know, instrumentals, but you have different types of songs and uh, I think that is one thing that makes this this versatility that is Chi as a musician and songwriter. <laughs> and uh, I just I want to encourage everybody go check Chi out. She is just such an amazing heart for the Lord and very very just gifted. And uh, she's on all major platforms with all your music, correct, Chi? Yes, uh, Spotify, Apple. Yeah, all this um, Deezer okay. and other uh, music platforms. What yes. about social media? I this is very funny because my husband always teases me. Here we go again. <laughs> he would tell me because before I I wasn't into this. Like uh, I never I my only social media account that I had before was Facebook. I started with a friendster. That's it. <laughs> And then later on, I, you know, I expanded. Now I have Instagram, I have TikTok, and I have Twitter. <laughs> so, oh, I didn't know you were yeah. over there too. What a fan. <laughs> just, yeah. just recently, just recently, just this year for, um, for TikTok and Twitter. I'll have to have to hook up with you on Twitter. I'm a big fan of Twitter. So. Yeah. Okay. I yeah. I, I, I next Twitter. <laughs> 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 the X. I also have a website uh, which I also created. Uh, it's chibumanglagsantos.org. You can check me there too. 
I just need to uh, kind of like update it. Would you spell that out? Uh, chi Bumanglag uh, dot org. It's a C H I B U M A N G L A G S A N T O S dot org. And if you're watching on YouTube or on one of our in demand stations, you can check it out on our website, crazyblastworship.com, or in the private Crazy Blast Worship group for Facebook. It's just, you're going to see bright, obnoxious, crazy blessed worship <laughs> <laughs> um, advertising. We'll have Chi's picture on there, and I'll make sure that the links to find and follow along with Chi are there as well. And uh, one of the things that I just, I have to encourage you guys, just like, love, follow especially share if you check out cheese music it helps more than you know <laughs> um and uh you know we really appreciate when you do it for crazy blessed worship because it helps us lift people up just like chi and uh our hope is that you know you'll you'll go check out her music and follow along with her ministry because she is one of those people we really believe in and um i want to give a shout out to our buddy Red Stainbrook, he's got Red's Room Entertainment, which he does online worship concerts as well on Friday mm -hmm. and Saturday nights. Mm -hmm. And she is going to be out on Red's Room on the 24th, correct? That's August right. 24th. Yes. So the day after the King Jesus release, you guys. Yes. <laughs> and and I'll be seeing be that too. Yeah. That's the debut. Okay, I love it. I will do my <laughs> best to be on there too because I enjoy those a lot. Um, so if if you're listening in and the radio station, um, again, it's Red's Room Entertainment. It's a Facebook group where you can go to Red's Booking on YouTube and you'll be able to check it out there. And I believe there's the other Chi videos on the Red's Booking as well on YouTube. So you can check out some of the lives she's done over there or in the Crazy Blessed Worship Facebook group, we got all the lives we left up in there. And you can go check out Chi. Rick is awesome. And he tags everyone in all the posts that he makes. There's a lot of effort in there. I know. <laughs> um, and before we, wrap, before we wrap up, is there anything else you have on your heart to share with us today, Chi? Um, just one thing, like um, the first time I... I released my song because when I left the, the mission, uh, I told myself I still would like to kind of like reach out to people um, in some other way. So I asked the Lord to kind of like use these songs of mine um, to minister to people. And I really pray that many more people would hear, uh, hear the gospel through the message of my songs. and. That will continue to be my prayer. So. She was like talking about writing her songs. And all of a sudden, you know, I, my first, when she's first on Friday Night Live, she was playing the guitar. When did you learn how to play the guitar? Oh, that's that question. Actually, when I was also in the mission, so uh, there's actually two nurses, like two nurses, uh, each station. Uh, we were spread out uh, all over the Philippines. We have uh, in the Luzon and then some in the Mindanao and the Visayas. There's like uh, three archipelagos in the Philippines. So we're spread out and there's always like two nurses, each station, medical station. So one of my partners that time is a good guitarist. So she taught me, like uh, oh, I started with the simple uh, DGE chords <laughs> and then uh, C, uh, the key of C, and it started from there. So it was there also in the mission oh, yeah. where I started to play the guitar. A lot of cool awesome. things coming out of the mission field. Yeah. You make people want to go in there and get their just experience in that. That sounds incredible. I just, yeah. I love the way you share your stories, Chi. Yeah. You guys, I'm bummed we got to wrap up. But please, again, if you follow along with Chi, check out her music, all major platforms. And uh, if you're interested in private coaching, you can reach out to Rick and myself. We do that. You can go to crazyblastworship.com and just go to the contact us section. We'd be happy to help you out however we can. And thanks so much for listening in. And we wish you a crazy blessed day. <laughs>